My special guest today served in the government of Zimbabwe as Minister of Information and Publicity, and much more recently as Minister of Higher Education. His new book, Excel Get, How Zimbabwe's 2018 presidential election was stolen, is now available on Amazon and can be accessed on the link that I'm going to paste in the description panel on the upload for this video and in the comment section on our Facebook page. Professor Jonathan, welcome to the show. It's my pleasure. Allow me to extend my congratulations on you publishing this book. I understand uh, there was a bit of, of some trouble uh, with publishing this book. I, I do know that there was some issues with the National Archives of Zimbabwe and with, of course, the ruling party ZANU-PF in as much as the issuing of the IS uh, BN number of the publication for this book, which was set to be launched by SAPES Trust. Uh, what was going on with this? Why was it being blocked? What is it that the book unraveled that might have been of some serious concern to these organizations? As I understood it, it was really uh, more about uh, preventing the book uh, from uh, reaching uh, uh, audiences in Zimbabwe, the, the physical copy, uh, uh, which was... Uh, uh, printed uh, in Zimbabwe. Um, but uh, uh, in Zimbabwean terms, nothing out of uh, uh, the usual. Uh, whenever there's something which the system believes might expose its inner workings, they react uh, uh, violently. Of elections in Zimbabwe is an issue that has been in the public domain like for so many years, for, you know, decades. People have just been talking about elections and have been uh, suggesting that on several occasions elections were rigged, elections were conducted in a manner that can be simply described as not free and not fair. But the exact details as to how this happened. Uh, remains shrouded in mystery and there hasn't been any comprehensive explanation as to how. What is it about the 2018 presidential election that was allegedly faulty and irregular that I want you to answer this question as you take me through the core ideas of your book and what you consider to be its central argument? Uh, thank you uh, for that question. Uh, the idea that perhaps there is a, a, a formula which is used to rig elections and uh, the formula is uh, applied to each and every election is obviously far-fetched. Uh, if there was that formula, uh, it would have uh, not taken this long uh, for, 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 for the country, for the world, uh, not to know. Uh, so I think we should disabuse ourselves of the notion that there is a, somehow a permanent formula that uh, the system or ZANU-PF uses or has been using since 1980 to rig elections. Because as a matter of fact, no election in Zimbabwe since 1980 has been accepted by the participants, the key participants as having been either uh, without uh, significant political violence or uh, has been um, uh, free and fair, as you said. So I want to put that uh, behind us. But I appreciate your question, because uh, in fact, your question is not suggesting that there is such a formula. You asked specifically, uh, what about the 2018 elections uh, was not right, uh, or was not uh, conducive for free and fair elections, which uh, uh, inspired, as it were, this book. Mm -hmm. I think to make a, a, a obviously a very long story short, uh, the answer must first take into account that by definition, an election is a rule bound process, political process, which culminates in a legal event. So that what becomes very important uh, to tell whether an election was free or fair uh, and what was wrong in particular with this one is to understand the rules that are, were applicable to that election and to ask whether those rules were, were, were followed because an election is a rule bound process 
which ends as a legal event. And with respect to the 2018 election, first and foremost, I think it was crazy for anyone and it remains crazy uh, that anyone would uh, have expected or still expects that that election was going to be free and fair uh, when it came seven months after a military coup. It is not possible uh, to have free and fair elections in a military state. By definition, it's not possible. And it is really, it turns otherwise rational people into irrational beings when they look for a free and fair election in a military coup, particularly a seven month old military state. It is absurd to do that. Mm -hmm. No army would uh, use uh, its equipment, men and women to grab power uh, through means of violence in order to, to let that power or risk letting that power disappear in a, in a free and fair election. No army does that. Uh, so I think we, we should keep that as a backdrop. A backdrop. Secondly, uh, and, 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 and uh, finally, in terms of your question, what was fundamentally wrong with the 2018 election is that uh, having entertained the notion that the coup was very popular, and will be supported by the generality of the population, the military, which had put its people and which had put its uh, architecture to anticipate any scenario and situation and react to it in real time, was shocked when V11s out of 10,985 polling stations in the wee hours of the 31st of July, after all the polling stations that it counted. And as you know, because we have a, a polling station based voters roll, uh, which uh, has uh, uh, an average of between 800 and 1200 uh, uh, registered voters, the, regist the, the voters roll has that uh, a few uh, some would say that many people, but it's very few. This makes it a very democratic thing. You can, uh, once you have reconciled the ballot papers and so forth, the counting can be very rapid. It's very easy. It does not take a lifetime to count 1,200 votes. Mm -hmm. So most of these uh, polling stations, the 10,985 polling stations, were done by 2 a.m. on the 31st of uh, July, 2018. There is a, a distribution structure for those uh, V11s. Uh, the, 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 the original ones must go to the next uh, electoral center, which is the ward center. But, and then others go to different places and you, you can find out the detail in, in, in Excel gate. But they are also required in terms of the uh, ZEC, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission's uh, uh, manual for election officers to send uh, uh, by uh, quickest possible means, which are obviously electronic. This is not as part of the formal transmission uh, uh, of, the, of the results, but this is an administrative arrangement. And you can understand, uh, uh, Mr. Chikumbo, no, no, you know, a, a military would not want to sit there waiting, wondering what is the result of oh, this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And saying, oh no, the process is that you go to the ward, to the constituency, to the mm -hmm. district, to the province, and then to the head office. They want to know mm -hmm. if, as soon as possible so that if there is a development that uh, to them raises what they would call <laughs> something can uh, be done, security <laughs> issues and so forth, they know. So mm -hmm. they sent those uh, copies of uh, V11s from each of the 10,985 polling stations and got to know the result quickly. And they found out that the result was overwhelmingly against mm. uh, Mr. Mnangagwa. And they did not then want that process to fulfill itself so that uh, what they had seen 
becomes the reality and it is announced that uh, Nelson Chamisa has won by 66% of the vote as was uh, uh, the outcome of that process. And that Nangagwa has gotten 33% and 1% going to the other uh, candidates, including spoiled ballot papers and so forth. So they had to quickly find op uh, an alternative option B to, to prevent that from being the outcome of the actual process. Remember, this is not the actual process. This is for information only. You get for your information head office. So once head office, which is in this case was run by the military, got to know that the result is going against Nangago, they quickly came up with a plan B. So what was plan B? Plan B was to manipulate and distort the rule bound process which says you start collecting or counting votes from the polling station, you go to the ward collection center where all the polling stations in that ward send their results mm -hmm. and the councillor or local authority winner is declared on the basis of a V23A. So mm -hmm. what was a V11 now becomes a V23. Mm -hmm. A. Mm -hmm. And then from there, all the wards report their v V23As to the constituency center, mm -hmm. which is, uh, trans translates or transforms these uh, V23As into V23Bs. Mm -hmm. And the constituency winner, the direct uh, MP, the, the MP for the constituency is declared there. So for the words, and this is very important, you start with 10,985 polling stations, you go to 1,958 words, which are in the country. So your V11, your v you must always understand, is your election return. And the election doesn't have one election return. It is five election returns. So you start with this one V11, you go to the ward, you have the second election return, which is your V23A. Then you move from 1,958 wards to 210 constituencies where the V23As are uh, added together from the constituents and you have your V23B. Mm -hmm. And the V23B, you declare the winner of the constituents and you send the V23B to the province and the province takes the V23Bs and uh, adds them, the constituencies in that province make up the V23Bs. It adds them together and it gets a V23C. And we have the election for the president for the, pre uh, for the province. And it's in the election return called V23C. The V23Cs are only 10 of them. They go to the National Command Center. And the National Command Center adds the V23Cs together and gets a V23D. And the V23D gives you the preliminary result of the presidential election. But in terms of the law, and this is very important, and this is section 110 of the Constitution, I mean, sorry, of the Electoral Act, uh, subsection three, it requires that the each of the 210 constituency officers certifies the constituency return, which is the V23B, certifies it and sends it by messenger to National Command Center. To get the final result of the presidential election, you must add the certified copies of V23Bs from 210 constituencies. Fine. So what, what happened in 2010? What happened in 20, I mean, in 2018? 18, yeah, yeah. Uh, what happened was that the movement was only from A, the polling station, to B, the ward station. And then Zach said they had to in, uh, come up with a different route with a different destination for transmitting the presidential election results. 
different from the one that is prescribed. In other words, instead of going A, B, C, D, E, they decided to go A, B, E. And then when they went A, B, E, E is the National Command Center, B is the Ward Center. They took all the uh, results of the presidential election uh, against the rule, against the law, and diverted them using a route and a destination that is not in the law. And they took them to Harare, to the National Command Center. And they started turning the Harare National Command Center into one giant polling station. They started counting uh, what they called V11s and V23As and forgot about C and D. That is rigging. Mm -hmm. That is how the 2018 election was rigged. The, the V11s that they started adding mm -hmm. were their own. They were fake V11s. They were not V11s that uh, uh, were the original V11s from the polling stations, from the 10,985 uh, polling stations. Where is this uh, evidence? The evidence is disclosed in Excel, of course, mm -hmm. but critically, it is actually contained in Zek's report to parliament. In terms of section 323 of the constitution, Zek must report uh, to parliament how it conducted a harmonized general election. Zek reported in June of uh, 2019 that they invented an illegal route for transmitting the results of presidential elections. And by inventing that uh, route, they disharmonized the harmonized elections. The harmonized elections are counted together so that the tally of the parliamentary results must match with the presidential results. They did not. There is a discrepancy of over 40,000 vote, votes. And if you take it into account, even in ZEC terms, it falls within uh, the fictitious margin of victory that was given to uh, Emerson Mnangagwa. And that 40,000 plus discrepancy between the presidential tally and the parliamentary tally uh, is within the zone of uh, a runoff in ZEC terms. So that if, if they had run the election properly, at the very least, even by their own figures, we should have had a runoff, mm -hmm. but, but, but we didn't. However, in terms of the law, if you do not substantially comply with the prescribed process for transmitting and the collecting, it's, it was not just Transmitting. transmitting yeah but collecting it was yeah. also collecting the, those results in other words counting them mm -hmm. zek did not transmit and collect the 2018 results in accordance with sections 37 of the electoral act and sections 64 65 65a 65b and critically section 110 subsection 3 which prescribes how you count election uh, uh, the, the presidential results for the president and which require that you count v23 b's mm. the fact that zeki confirmed that they had some 20 or so people in their collation room in arare sitting there with an excel a spreadsheet and trying to use the excel spreadsheet as an election re result is, an, is an, a scandalous admission of uh, a theft, massive theft of, of an election. The book mentions uh, several individuals that you consider to be at the heart of this electoral theft. Uh, names like Priscilla Justice uh, Chigumba, um, Luke Malaba, and several other individuals that you mentioned from the military, from the CIO. What specific role in the rigging process did these people play? Chigumba is the mother of the rigging, and Malaba is the father of the rigging. Mm -hmm. 
uh, endorsed what the mother was doing. And um, Mavis uh, Matsanga uh, and, and the uh, retired uh, Major Chivasa from the army who were running the operations and logistics, who were responsible for diverting away from the ward centers straight to Harare, the results of the presidential elections, instead of letting them go the same route with the parliamentary elections. That involves a lot of logistics. The, the, peop, the persons who are overseeing that is uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the two ladies. They are the sisters of rigging. So we have sisters of rigging, the mother of rigging, the father of rigging. It, what is important though, is that because the, uh, it did not involve only the logistics of diverting and inventing a new route with a new dis destination, which is not prescribed in the law. It was also the use, you know, the uh, Zek uh, misled everybody and uh, uh, Malaba uh, endorsed it that, you know, we are not, we don't use computers, we don't have a server. You know, they told a lie that everything is manual. Mm. You know, we don't have a server. In spite of the fact that the law, section 67, uh, of the uh, I mean, of the Electoral Act requires them to notify, they requires the constituencies mm -hmm. to notify electronically mm -hmm. the chief election officer. Despite that, they pretended they didn't have the computers and all that. Actually, they had, and this has not been uh, spoken about uh, uh, at all, but is detailed in Excel gate. Mm -hmm. Because they were using computers, the computers were run by AFRICOM. The company, Africo, mm -hmm. is the one that was uh, running this and doing this. And partly that is the reason why they keep lying that, no, we didn't have and so forth. Because if they were to disclose, it is actually scandalous. You see, ZEC is not supposed to be controlled mm -hmm. by any authority. Yeah, it's supposed to be independent. It is an independent yeah. constitutional body. In fact, independent commission. Mm -hmm. It's a chapter 12 institution. Mm -hmm. But ZEC did not run anything important. It never did. The computers were run by AFRICOM. The registration, accreditation, and so forth were run by a CIO company. Mm -hmm. So between the CIO and the army, they ran the processes, the operations, mm -hmm. using their instruments. Either Matsanga, who is actually active, she's employed, she joined the uh, she was not joined, she was des uh, 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 seconded to the uh, electoral body in 2008 as a divisional intelligence officer. Mm -hmm. Now she is a director in the CIO, as we speak right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's a director and she was uh, congratulated uh, and rewarded for rigging the 28, uh, 2018 election. And she was given a house in, in, in Borodel. Oh a posh uh, mansion in, uh, uh, in there. Um, so uh, there is a serious problem uh, that where is on paper, ZEC is supposed to be an independent constitutional body that runs uh, elections transparently, mm -hmm. efficiently, uh, 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 and uh, impartially. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mm. because it, it does not even itself run. The elections are run for Zek by the securocrats. There are several people that believe and that do think that you can't be taken seriously, uh, especially your work in as much as uh, the 2018 election is concerned because it's argued that you belong to the losing camp of the 2017 coup that is, quote unquote, the G40 faction of ZANU-PF, and that any of the arguments that you can, that can come out of this group and from any individual who belongs to this faction is just an argument of a beta person. Very rigorous research, a very comprehensive analysis, but what do you say? Well, in the first place, I say that they are the ones who must not be taken seriously. <laughs> because if you, were, if you were to take people like that seriously, you will have to conclude that the only people to be listened to are the ones who are in power, who win and run the system, who in fact are the ones who have every reason 
to misinform the public and lie and they will never tell you anything uh, that is truthful. Uh, I think that the very notion that uh, some people don't understand in political contestation, they are winners and losers. Uh, and that the tension uh, is in the public interest between contestants and contending uh, uh, forces is for me an explanation as to why to a large extent political discourse in Zimbabwe is very primitive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because you know, uh, uh, people think that if someone uses a, a 1945 military tank or an AK-47 to run you out of town, they are very intelligent. Mm -hmm. They are very smart. Look at this guy. He has gone to the barracks, gotten the uh, armored vehicles and chased Jonathan Moyo and his family out of his house and out of Harare and out of Zimbabwe. Wow, this guy is very smart. I mean, why, what have we done for us to be cursed like that? Uh, I, I think this is, you know, if Zimbabwe is a constitutional democracy, which it isn't, uh, which I hope it will be at some point, you would expect people to appreciate the, uh, the competition of ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, in respect to the, of, of this issue, I, I, I hope the, uh, one of the reasons why I think you shouldn't take seriously these guys. Do you know, if you look at uh, countries in our neighborhood, Mm -hmm. uh, which is transformed. It has not been possible to see any transformation, whether you're looking at Zambia, Malawi, Tanzania, or far off, you're looking at Kenya. Those countries that have uh, had uh, uh, competitive elections producing a different result mm -hmm. uh, have uh, 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 had a good uh, dosage of the kind of people they are describing, I'm sure it's not you, you are attributing this to others, mm -hmm. who were in the system, lost in the system, uh, became uh, opposition people, uh, worked with others, and won. Mm -hmm. this, this is the reality that we have there. What does the, I, 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 I and, and I say this uh, as a political scientist in general terms, you will never know the inner workings of a system until those who were in it before start telling you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what country you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't know about the inner workings of the system as some guy shouting from the street there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, 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 if people were progressive, not only would they listen to some of the uh, accounts that um, former, those who are said to have lost uh, in 2017, mm -hmm. are saying, encourage them, make them feel more comfortable and uh, uh, brave, courageous to tell you more, because there is no way. I mean, you can forget it. There's no, you cannot learn about the inner workings of a system from reading books. Mm -hmm. unless those books are written by the former. Mm -hmm. That's what has happened in the civilized world el elsewhere, including where you are in America. Mm -hmm. You get, I mean, look at the books that are coming uh, out uh, okay, about yeah. the Trump administration. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, you, and you don't, in there, because uh, you are in a civilized country, they don't, they don't start saying, oh, no, you know. You can't uh, be taken uh, seriously. Oh, I mean, come on. There are better ways of cross-checking the veracity of information than saying, oh, no, what else do you expect him to say? He's a bitter loser and so forth. And let us be clear, there's nothing wrong with bitterness. Mm -hmm. It is a human experience. Mm -hmm. It's whether the bitterness is justified or not. Mm -hmm. Justified bitterness is very useful for getting things out. Uh, Professor Jonathan, we have an election uh that is ahead of us in 2023 uh the general the presidential election that comes what are the key issues at stake and what major lesson, lessons can we draw uh from uh, this experience of 2018 and even several other elections that have been held before for us to at least move to a point where we can have free fair and credible election or something closer to that i don't think it is 
possible uh, we, we, within the limits of this conversation to give you a complete laundry list of the things you are asking about. I can only give some highlights which are indicative. Mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, it is outrageous to expect a military state to organize a free and fair election, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. That reality was there in 2018, it's stronger now. That military state of 2018 has spread itself and the challenge uh, will be much more difficult as a backdrop to a free and fair election. You can't have a junta mm -hmm. organize a free and fair election, number one. Uh, number two, it is impossible to have a ZEC or a Zimbabwe Electoral Commission that is run by people who allowed the securocrats to steal the election in 2018 to do better or differently in 2023. Uh, the, by the fact that the commissioners at ZEC and the uh, technocrats led by uh, Utoile, uh, who allowed that to happen, this, this, that fact alone disqualifies them from running any election. Uh, or in any event, makes it unrealistic for anyone to expect them to rise up to the call of their vocation with integrity. That's the second thing. The third thing, as I said at the beginning, the uh, elections or an election, an election is a rule bound process which ends up as a legal event. That means you must know the rules and you must use them to your advantage at the very start of the process because the elections are not going to start in uh, 2023 uh, or some arbitrary date next year in 2022. The 2023 elections from a rule bound perspective have started. They start with the mobilization of, of, of the voters role, which voters role outcome will be used to delimit the constituencies. There was a, an outrageous report today uh, in one of the media outlets where, where uh, it was reported that uh, members uh, or some official of the MDC in Bulawayo complained after a ZEC, the, the, the ZEC representative, the provincial uh, officer said there has been uh, insignificant voter registration, new voters uh, uh, in Bulawayo. And if the situation remains as it is, Bulawayo province is at risk of losing three constituencies. And then the, the political reaction was, oh, nonsense, we have been registering people. In fact, last week we registered 100 people and took pictures of those 100 people queuing to register. Yeah. Well, the nonsense is what that official was saying. Mm. <laughs> this is a matter that needs to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. And 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 you the, 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 that official needs to work very hard to register people and to keep copies of the voter registration slips, not to keep photos of the people whom he's saying they were queuing at some place doing registration. They may have been queuing for some other purpose. And, and I, I just was very concerned, not by what the ZEC official said. Mm -hmm. And to dismiss a ZEC official now, who says, please take it seriously, otherwise you will lose or, 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 uh, uh, constituencies, is irresponsible. That ZEC official needs to be commended for saying that. He, he or she is raising the right flags, making the right noise, you know? You, uh, and, 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 and so uh, 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 
it is important to, 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 to know the rules. I just want to say one thing that we have learned from the previous elections and from the 2018 uh, one is that actually we don't, you see, even if you're in a difficult situation, I, one thing I accept, although sometimes when this is coming from ZANU-PF people, especially the military ones and, and the Mnangagwa Varakash, it's not uh, uh, well meant, uh, but there is something to it for us to reflect and, and consider. Is that, uh, you can't say everything is wrong. Because if, if everything around us is wrong, let us forget it. We, uh, uh, we will not be able to write it. There are things that are okay, and we need to build on those things. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people like saying almost uh, without thinking or reflection that there must be political reforms, there must be electoral reforms, but really, they, they are not really sure about what we should reform. I mm -hmm. want to say, in terms of the laws, mm -hmm. the, the electoral laws in Zimbabwe are progressive. Mm -hmm. And I think Zimbabwe has one of the most uh, progressive electoral laws in the region. The very fact that we have uh, a, a, a polling station based voters' roll is just wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, what is wrong in Zimbabwe is mm. electoral practice. Just look at what Zek people do. You will not have a law to stop people from breaking a law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it is preposterous to expect that to happen. Mm -hmm. If people are breaking the laws and you keep saying, let's make laws to say, <laughs> what? To say what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there is no law that is going to force behavior. Mm -hmm. Conduct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Electoral practice in Zimbabwe is atrocious. You either have people who are violent during elections or you have people who, have, who are ignorant and lack capacity during elections. Mm -hmm. And the effect is the same. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of work to do. Thank you very much, Professor Jonathan. Viewers and listeners, this was Professor Jonathan Moyo. He served in the government of Zimbabwe as Minister of Information and Publicity, and much more recently as Minister of Higher Education. His new book, Excelgate, How Zimbabwe's 2018 presidential election was stolen, can be accessed on Amazon on the link that I'm going to paste in the description panel on the upload for this video and in the comment section on our Facebook page. Professor Jonathan, thank you very much for your time. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Wonderful. Have a good day. Same to you. Bye-bye.